everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Octio Studio, and today I'm sharing with you a mixed media paper art doll that I made for an exchange. I belong to a Facebook group where everyone is interested in paper dolls and art dolls, and we are matched up with someone else in the group to exchange with, and then there's a theme. I actually made this doll in October, um, towards the end of October, I believe. And it was the theme was woodlands or um, something like that, something like that, <laughs> fall woodlands, something it, along that that strain. Nature, I can't remember exactly the wording. So I wanted to uh, start out the doll in the, the normal way that I do with my mixed media art dolls, which is to take a piece of heavy watercolor paper, this is 140 pound cold press watercolor paper, and cover it with collage to on both sides to create the body of the, you know, the actual body of the doll. So this time I wanted kind of a, a, a naturally dark color. It's, I, I usually do like text paper and um, things like that that are kind of a lighter tan. This time I just used the paper left over from tea bags and it's dried, the tea is taken out of it, the bags are opened. And they, they just have an interesting random color and pattern. And so I glued those down with napkin glue because it's a very fine type of paper on both sides of that piece of watercolor paper. And then I drew my pieces um, I used some of the pieces that I have from uh, previous projects, pattern projects, and then I made I made a few of them new just for this doll. So I will be sure to put in the iCard up in the left and also at the end screens, different videos of other paper dolls that I've made so that you can see maybe more of the process of making the body. I don't think people need to see me cut and draw over and over and over these dolls, especially if they're they're similar. So the only thing different about this one is that um, the head is a little bit different. I drew it uh, wider. Uh, I was thinking of a, a baby deer, a fawn, and I actually named this doll fawn, that would be, um, you know, in the woodlands in the fall. <laughs> that, that was the theme. So I made the face, the cheekbones wider, the chin more pointy, and then I also added some little antlers and ears to get to to give the idea of what it is. I mean, you, you have to be able to recognize it or else it doesn't make any sense. And I still kept it humanoid looking in that it has hair and uh, the eyes. I made big eyes, a small mouth, kind of a wide nose to make it kind of a hybrid between a baby deer and a person. And then I also made the body more stocky because if you if you stood up a deer on its hind legs, the top part of it, the chest part is large. They have like a pretty large cage and and then their body narrows down at the at the butt part. <laughs> so that's the kind of shape I kind of wanted to integrate. I also wanted some integration of colors and pattern as well to make it look more like what I was going for. So after all my pieces were cut out and um, my lines were all drawn in, then I sponged around the edges of all the pieces. This is an articulated um, doll, it's particularly in the arms. It has, it has a, a forearm, an upper arm, and a hand, but the legs, I kept them I, I redrew the legs as well to turn the feet into a hoof um, shape at the bottom. So I, I didn't articulate the legs at the knee. I wanted them to be more fixed. And so and then I drew this kind of a hoof on the feet to make it again look more like a deer. So just some alterations to my regular pattern, my regular human pattern to make it uh, match the idea of what I was going for. So the sponging around the edges was to cover up any white after, you know, it's it's collaged on both sides with the tea paper, but 
when you cut it out, then the edges, you can see the white paper. So I sponge it around all the edges. And then now I am adding in darker color with my Faber-Castell pit pins. These are uh, India ink pins that are slightly blendable over the sealed surface because I, of course, sealed all of that with Mod Podge napkin glue. Making everything look more, um, you know, just adding the details and the shadows and stuff to make the hands look normal to fill in the bottom parts of the hooves to put some shading where the knee would be shadowed, you know, just things like that, little touches. Um, I wanted the chest to have that that typical white um, on a, well, I'm particularly a white-tailed deer. The underbelly is white all the way up to the under their chin and all the way down. And then they also, of course, have a white tipped tail on their, on their back part. So then I needed to uh, work on the head. This is the most intensive part. The, the painting and shading and coloring on this takes the longest. So that's what I'm working on now. I started with the ears because that's obvious they're going to be kind of a reddish brown color and have a lighter color inside that I colored pink. And I also uh, worked on the, the horns because that I knew. What I was wondering to myself as I was doing this is what color is the hair going to be? Because now this is working on the humanoid part and I just I wasn't sure. <laughs> so I worked on the parts that I could easily do. I'm using these Neo Color 2 water soluble crayons and I'm I'm scratching out the crayon onto my under paper. This is deli paper that I work over and then picking it up with a water tank brush. So rather than drawing it directly onto my paper doll, I'm uh, doing it this way, kind of making myself a palette with this very blendable, very easy to use um, water soluble crayon. It's highly pigmented and it's soft and blendable. I also have some white gesso on a plate that you can't see on my palette plate to blend in with it so that I can add uh, a little bit more stability to this water-based product as well as adding highlights because on a face, of course, and it, particularly if it was a deer face, the the nose part is coming way out. So you do want to give a highlight to that part, um, the bridge of the nose, and then also the cheekbones. Um, adding a little pink, going back in with a little bit of darker brown to add some shading. This process takes a while. It's just adding and uh, blending and adding and blending, moving back and forth until you're satisfied with what you have. And so just as if you were painting a portrait or something like that, this is the same process of um, adding highlights, adding color, blending, adding some shadows, adding color, adding highlights, back and forth until you're satisfied. So you can see that I'm building up the shadows, I'm building up the color on the cheeks, and I finally decide that the hair should be a light color, like white, basically white or light uh, ivory or something, because I was thinking about on the back of a fawn, uh, particularly a baby deer, they have those little white dots, little freckles. And I, so that was kind of where I got the idea to do the white, uh, very light colored hair. So that's what I'm working on. It's, um, this is a fun process for me, but it is time consuming. And then uh, what you don't see in the video is that I also make like a folded over folder to keep the doll in and I usually decorate that. Um, I think I just made it just a folder this time. I don't think it was a shape or anything but I can't remember now because I've already mailed it away and I don't remember what I did but I always make some sort of a container to store the doll in just in case um, the person who receives it doesn't want to put it on display or something. Um, I'm not really sure what the people do <laughs> with these. Uh, I have a few that I've traded for and I still have them stored in a folder. I have, well, no, one of them's up on, up, up on my bulletin board, I think now, but I have received the exchange dolls from Naomi Walsh and she made a really cool sun and moon um, kind of celestial dolls. And you'll see those 
at the end of the video in a photograph that I put there for you to see so you can see what I got in exchange for my doll. I think I've traded with Naomi before so um, there's a lot of new people in the group but I haven't I wasn't paired with them I was paired with someone I had already exchanged with before. So then of course I've got to do all the same on the back. A lot of people's paper dolls the back is not decorated it's just the front what you see from the front when you flip it over all you see is like little tabs and blank paper but not mine mine are art dolls they are um, they're 360 everything is just as worked on on the back as it is on the front so now I'm making uh, I'm, I'm highlighting that white area of the underside of the deer person uh, by adding some shadow around it and then making it kind of furry and darker looking on the back like it would be <laughs> if it was a deer. So I think that the body and the head are the things that I worked in. Well, no, I worked a lot on the hands too, but um, now I've got the, the fabric castell pin out again and I'm really adding in kind of illustrative details. Um, I'm kind of an illustrator, so that's what I do. <laughs> Just darkening up things, adding streaks in the hair, adding uh, darkness around the eyes and the pupils. The pupils have to be dark, so that type of stuff. And then coming back in with white um, with my Posca pen in a minute to add some super bright highlights because it just wouldn't be something I made if it didn't have Posca pin, right? White Posca pin. I just had to order another three pack. So that makes the, I think the eighth three pack that I've ordered from Amazon <laughs> of white Posca pins since I started ordering them from there. I, I can't tell you how much time that is because I didn't, uh, I didn't look at that like when the, the date of the very first one was, but I did, it did tell me you've ordered this already this many times. <laughs> It just makes me giggle because I realize how much of that pen I use. Probably almost every project. I just, I'm just obsessed, I guess. I like the the three products that I'm using on this, the best of all the things that I have. The Neocolor 2 crayons, the Faber-Castell Pit Artist Brush Pins, and the um, white, very bright white opaque Posca acrylic paint pens. These are my favorites. So if you're asking for something for Christmas or Hanukkah or whatever you celebrate, if you're asking for a gift, these things are things that I recommend and be sure you use my link to Amazon if you're going to buy them. <laughs> so I think I'm about ready to, um, I must have done some trimming there. I might, might now finally be happy with my coloring and I'm going to maybe attach her head to her body and then attach all the other pieces. I use mini brads. They're like little teeny tiny brads. So it's got like a round head and then two metal pieces that come off and you stick it through the hole and then fold them open. If you don't know what a brad is, I think they're also called paper fasteners. I'm not sure, but um, I guess I needed to brighten up and make it look a little bit more shaggy on her uh, front where the, the white is. And then I'm adding some super bright white highlights to the hair. I did attach the neck and I won't make you watch me attach all the other pieces because that's redundant. You just punch holes in them and then um, put the brads through. So that's not something anybody needs to watch over and over again. So there's the head and the body. I'm going to put all the other pieces on. There's her legs. So now it's all put together. The doll is complete. But I did remember that on her backside, she needs to have a tail, a little white tipped tail. So I took a scrap of that paper and cut out a uh, kind of a teardrop shape. And I sponged it around the edges. And then I glued that on with some tacky glue. It didn't need to move, so I didn't need to use a paper fastener. And then I made the tip very bright white, like a white-tailed deer would have with some of the 
posca pin. You can uh, just like press the posca pin down on your under paper and then pick up that paint with your water brush and use it that way as well. So that's what I did. So now my doll's complete, but I usually like to dress them. So I'm going to make an outfit. And I thought since it was kind of fall woodland theme that I would use leaves. So I have this um, fall leaf stencil that I got at Michael's years ago. Uh, I think it's made by Folk Art. And I'll tr um, try to find it for you and put a link in the description box below if I remember. And I have some different very lightweight papers. This is a piece of deli paper that has paint scraped onto it. And I'm just sponging through the stencil, either using the gesso that's on my palette or else these inks, these archival inks that I have in a rusty color and a brown color. That's potting soil. And I believe the other one's called orange blossom, but it's really not orange, it's more rust color. And then I'm going to cut all these out, which again, not forcing you to watch that. This is a tea bag that has some stenciling on it with acrylic paint. And I'm just using a marker to draw through the stencil to make some leaves. And I just, I want real, really lightweight floaty paper. I don't want anything heavy, no cardstock, no watercolor paper, but all just real, really light papers. This one is a gel print that was made on a piece of, um, I think it's on probably craft colored deli paper. I do have some of that. This one's on a little dictionary paper and they've, it's already got some paint on it that's kind of a red color. So that's how I made all these little different leaves to make kind of a skirt. And my original idea was that it was gonna be, I was gonna put all these bits on a piece of ribbon, which I tried and I just couldn't get it to tie around nicely enough. So I decided to make an actual paper dress. So now I've got some mixed media paper and I'm drawing the shape of a dress. Simple, um, you know, she's got kind of fat hips, kind of a fat waist. <laughs> so it's not, it's not a beautiful silhouette. I would have, re I would have preferred to, to tie the leaf skirt around, but it just didn't work. It just didn't work right. So I took all them off the, the ribbon, which I cut out that from, because I mean, I need to try to make this as short as possible or you guys are not gonna watch the whole thing. So then I of course need a front and back because like I told you before, my dolls are 360. They're as decorated on the back as they are on the front. So I'm making two pieces, but they're, attached together. Um, I'm going to cut this whole thing out. So there we go. I've cut it out. And then I've got one, the front section has longer tabs on the top. So they will be able to fold over to uh, attach in the back to hold it on. And then the side piece is attached by, by cutting it that way so that it um, is two pieces that are attached. And I take some different deco art fall colored paints um, and I am going to use that same folk art stencil again and stencil all over these little, this little paper dress, completely covering it with leaf shapes in fall colors. So that's, you know, I've got yellowy, orangey, goldy, rusty, green, some go green gold colors. Um, all the fall colors of leaves, and I'm going to just put leaves all over it. Just completely coat it in leaves. That's my plan. In the final product, you don't necessarily see that there's a bunch of leaves on there, but when you look at um, the pattern that I made, you can see a lot of these edges, like a leaf edge, that gives you the idea that it's foliage. I'm trying to use the smaller leaves on this stencil. This For fall, this is a great stencil. It's just, it's a great one. I don't have anything that's better at fall leaves than this stencil. <laughs> I've had it for a long time. It has a lot of paint coated onto it. I think I brought in some kind of iron red color there. 
I don't remember the exact colors, but I'll try to look them up for you for the materials list below the video in case you're wondering. This was a while ago, so I don't remember exactly everything that I did. So I'm going to have to recreate it. And I don't even have the doll because I sent it to, to Naomi, <laughs> so I can't look at it. So I'll do my best on the materials list below the video to tell you whatever it is. I also got out some copper paint and did some copper splatters and then I kind of filled in some of the white areas after I did the splatters to not have any white left on this. And then I'm taking these leave pieces. Remember I've already glued them onto a ribbon at one point and then took them off the ribbon. So they're kind of trimmed at the top. They don't look exactly like they did to start out with, but you get the idea. It's a leaf skirt and I'm going to glue it on her little tennis dress <laughs> so that she has kind of a fluffy leaf um, skirt at the bottom. So then I need to put uh, the tabs on. I'm going to use, I glued one of them down because it, I only needed to open on the one side for it to slip, for her arm to slip through. And then I'm going to use some Velcro on the other tab so that it can be removable. You can take it off and on of the doll, which I think is important. I also took that ribbon and glued it on to make kind of a little uh, belt sort of situation so that there's a line between where this, the fluffy part of the skirt starts and the bodice part of the dress. And then I also tied a scrap of it in to a bow and glued it on just to make it a little cute. I have some self-adhesive Velcro dots and I cut them in half or into quarters when I'm using them on the dolls and then stick each side stick one side down first with the velcro attached to each other stick the other side down and then you can pull them apart and you'll have the loop side and the furry side that can stick together but are also removable so that's why i like to use velcro dots so i hope you've enjoyed this video go ahead and take a look at some of my other art doll videos um, that i will link in the icards and at the end screen and of course, remember to give it a thumbs up, leave me a comment or question below. Subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, turn on your notification bell so that you know when a new video comes out. If you don't get your notifications when a new video comes out, even if you've pressed the bell, go ahead and press it again because it's, uh, it's been finicky and some people have had theirs turned off. Also, uh, you can share this on Pinterest if you have an art doll board or something like that to pin it to, or you can share it with your friends on Facebook. All these things really help me out, help my channel. If you share my work so that other people can find my channel, that's how, that's the best way. Word of mouth. It's the best way. <laughs> I added a little bit of white dot detailing on, and that was the end of my decoration of the doll. So that's it for me. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.